I'm the oldest one in a post-Victorian family, raised on a farm. I was expected to go to college. I was expected to go to this fraternity house. And I knew, without anybody saying so, that I was expected to get married to the little blonde sorority girl and then have four or five kids afterwards and return to the farm. And so it became the path of least resistance. It was just fine. It wasn't a burden at that time. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I know way deep down inside, this isn't quite right for me. But in the mid-70s, I just didn't have an alternative. At that time, maybe the American Psychiatric Association said, well, it's not a disease anymore. Men still couldn't get married. It was still an aberrant lifestyle. Uh, there was just no social support outside of New York City and Stonewall and maybe Los Angeles and the Black Cat. There was just no role model for me to follow. So as a teenager, all the other kids were looking at playboys from the 1960s, oogling over giant boobs and, you know, the mystery of the female anatomy. And it didn't, I just wondered why doesn't that interest me? But when I was on the road crew, I would pick up the occasional magazine that was inches, and that I kept in my truck. Also, I went away to school to live in a fraternity house with 55 guys. We had a gang shower that accommodated three guys at once, and then there was a private shower upstairs. So the gang shower was the interest of several of us guys um, Saturday night, Friday night, after coming home from the bars, uh, we would pretend that we needed a shower and we would go in there and soap up. But it never really involved a serious sexual encounter. I just loved being in a fraternity house with 55 guys. No adult supervision. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. And I eventually met my wife in college the further I went into the marriage pathway, married five years, married 15 years, married 25 years, the harder it became to actually come out. So I felt more and more caged, trapped. Ultimately, my ex-wife would tell you that it inflicted a lot of damage on her. But neither of us knew how to talk about that. 15 years into our marriage, um, I came out to my wife and I said, all I, all I said was, I'm still working out my sexuality. And that drew a burst of tears. I couldn't go on. My whole emotional set caved in on itself. And we spent the rest of a Paris vacation not talking about it. But I didn't have my first gay sex until I was about 35 or 36 years old. I answered an ad, and it was one of these things where you turn back to the personals, and it's the gay white male. So I wrote in to box whatever it was to the newspaper, the Rockford newspaper. I hooked up with my first boyfriend, Matt, who was 19. We had a raging affair for a year. We broke up. And that was the devastating event that led me to believe I needed to do something other than fantasize about guys. After breaking up with a boyfriend who wanted to be out to the world, I was so devastated. I, I said, what am I going to do with all this energy in my head? I was maybe 38 years old at the time. And somebody suggested, why don't you go to medical school? I got in the first time, I'm proud to say. Uh, I was in the top third of the class, I'm proud to say, after being out of school for 18 years. And that's how much I needed a distraction from my own self. Uh, and as I said, it worked for a while until I graduated from medical school. And then I graduated from residency and I was an attending for five years. And then I met my husband. I had everything in life that I wanted by the time I was a graduate anesthesiologist attending is making $600,000 a year in a big house and a fancy car. And I was still unhappy. I had everything I ever worked for and I was still unhappy.
and growing more unhappy by the day. I would come home at night and finish a bottle of wine before seven o'clock in the evening. Part of that was the stress of being an anesthesiologist. Part of that was just guilt, a lifetime of guilt. And so I have two stories, one that I tell straight people and one that I tell gay people. So the straight people, I say, I was at LA Fitness and I was doing bench press and I was just looking up at the ceiling and I was struggling. <laughs> and all of a sudden out of the top view of my head, here's this, there's this vision of this handsome black man saying, can I spot you? And I looked him straight in the eye this is what I'm telling the straight people now. I looked at him straight in the eye and I said, I think you already have. Now, the story I tell the gay people is the real story is I was in the LA Fitness and I was showering and across the way, I hear the curtain rip off the rod. And I look over there and here's my future husband in profile <laughs> at attention. So, long story short, we had a great affair, and we got closer and closer, and I finally told my wife, we got divorced. After 34 years, the divorce process took about four months, because I signed off on my wife's lawyer's contract. It was not about money. And I fired my lawyer because he was going to get us to fight. And I said, no, I'm not doing that. So it cost me a lot of money. It's still costing me a lot of money, but I sleep well. I give her everything she want, wants. Um, she's still angry and bitter, but she got the finances she wants. Clarence and I went on to get married in 2013. My parents came out from Chicago to Laguna Beach to marry us in the sand we wore blue jeans, white t-shirts, and we were barefoot in the sand. I've got valuable contributions to make now. You can take that or leave it, but I have a feeling you're gonna take it. I bootstrapped my way up, and I bootstrapped my emotions and my self-perception of my self-value all the way up. There's no guilt anymore. There's just happiness. There's just an alignment of all nine planets every day now. Before, it was always self-doubt, insecurity, questions of what's wrong with me. I don't fit in here. I still don't, at 40 and 50, I still don't fit in. Now I fit in. And the places where I don't fit in, I don't care about. And I keep returning to that ability to love yourself at your core. You're not here by accident. You didn't get made badly. It's not a genetic mutation. This is you. You got one trip. Love yourself. I got that now. <laughs>